are attempting to break our electric vehicle cannonball record. This is a record to go the fastest from New York to Los Angeles, and currently I hold the record for a Model 3 with my friend Matthew Davis. However, I want to prove the viability of the CCS network. Okay, we're in. Work, please work. What, what state of charge are we at? Four. So we called up Porsche. We said, hey, do you guys have a Taycan for us? They said, sure. And throughout this two hour video, you're gonna see what it was like to take this Taycan across the country from New York to Los Angeles. The video will be broken up into three parts. The pre-trip, during the drive, and the post-trip roundup. Now this is a long video, we recognize that. And also keep in mind, we're not able to show you everything on the drive yet. We cannot show you many of the driving scenes for some time to come. First leg, you guys caught up to me real quick and I was, I was doing, you know, mid nineties and slowing down where I thought cops might be. And, and then, then I learned and the next leg I was, uh, I was hovering around 100. Yeah, flat out. Yeah, my car started to smell funny. <laughs> Join us on the entire journey across the country in the Porsche Taycan, where we go through how we broke the electric cannonball record. And now you join us in New Jersey with a Porsche Taycan 4S on the aerodynamic wheels, the best configuration for a cannonball. But of course, there are some issues. You guys know what this means. Red Ball to Portofino, New York to Los Angeles, Tycon 4S, aero wheels, big battery, massaging seats, ultimate road trip specification. Will the 350 kilowatt Electrify America chargers get us to Los Angeles quicker than our Tesla electric vehicle record? If this is faster than the Tesla, man, you will and I will be very surprised and excited we really hope, we know the car can do it. Can the charging infrastructure support it? We will see. We're leaving here in exactly nine minutes. We're gonna be shredding it across the country. The time to beat is 45 hours, 16 minutes. We really don't know if we can do it. We've run the calculations, everything says yes, but will the calculations account for potential charging issues and cold temperatures, weather and traffic? Man, it's gonna be tough. Have to watch the full video to find out what happens leaving Red Ball Garage and heading out. So we have two different types of chargers that we'll see on this trip. Uh, one will be a 350 kilowatt charger. Others will be 150 kilowatts, although they will output a little bit more for the Taycan, we're told, uh, like maybe 150, 60, 70 type thing, uh, likely because it's an 800 volt system, so we can pull less power. Uh, but the 350 kilowatts are gonna be 26 of the 28 stops or 25 of the 27 stops. Two are 150s. Uh, so that's just going to sit basically here, max speed, all the way to 70%, it looks like, 65%. Uh, the 350 kilowatts, we're going to get max speed to 23%, 25%, and then we're going to be down to 150 kilowatts by the time we hit 37%, something like this. A lot of it comes down to temperature. So the problem that we're running into now is the car is at the Porsche dealership where the navigation system doesn't work. The car doesn't know where it is. That means we can't precondition the car to the next charging station. So what, ha what will happen is if the car knows it's going to a 350 kilowatt charger, it will run the battery heater, get everything nice and hot so that when we plug in, it can accept maximum power. The car thinks it's driving around West Virginia right now. So the only option we have if they can't fix the nav is to precondition the car to the nearest charger as to its location. So we'll have to find chargers in West Virginia to tell it it's going to, and hopefully it preconditions there. And the important thing that I'd like to point out is may, some people might not realize the car will only precondition the battery if it is set in the navigation to go to a DC fast charger. Kyle can't just turn on battery preconditioning. If he could, if he could this wouldn't be an issue. Right, we'd use our own navigation system, uh, which we're going to do anyway. We're not using the Porsche system for, for route planning. We're gonna be using Waze and Apple Maps and Google Maps. We already have, we know the route we're going on. So that's our biggest concern right now. Uh, the other concern is going to be charging station reliability. Ah, oh, God damn it. All right, let's try the other one. They said connector number two. I just took the car on a 2,500 mile trip over the last three days, four days. And 
to, it was not very reliable, uh, the station. So we had connection issues. We had overcharging issues where the chargers would deliver 270, 80, 90 kilowatts, 290 kilowatts. And the car says, hey, I can't take that much. And it shuts off charging. Uh, a lot of communication protocol issues. We've been on the phone with uh, Porsche Engineering and Vysock. Uh, we spoke to the guy who um, created the charging protocols, uh, or I should say integrated them into the Taycan. I'll use this IEEE something, something, something. Uh, we spoke to Christoph Gumbel, who's a good friend, who's head of virtual vehicle development at Porsche, who pretty much is responsible for a large portion of the Taycan. Uh, he's, he's very excited about the run, but uh, yeah, we're, we're really worried about software on the car. Uh, we're also worried about software on the chargers and everything working together to make, make it all happy. Uh, Porsche Cars North America has been awesome so far. They uh, have, have worked with Paul Miller Porsche where the car is right now. They basically shut down their entire operations to work on the Taycan. Situation, we cannot get the navigation system to work. They've cam cannibalized parts off other Taycans here on the lot. The SIM card's also dead, we knew that. So looks like we're going non-connected in a Taycan on an already pretty tough trip with no navigation <laughs> built in. <laughs> this is gonna be nuts. Yeah. So they have uh, the shop foreman in there working on the car. He's like, can I hot wire it to make the GPS work? We're like, do whatever you need to do to get the GPS working. Uh, so he's like literally pulling a brand new Taycan Turbo S right off the lot, ripping the thing apart, putting the parts in our 4S. Many electric car, experienced electric car people understand the challenges of charging on public charging networks, but some of the viewers here might not. That's what makes this trip so much harder than a regular Cannibal Run trip with a gas car. You, the charging is so critical that you have to connect. It has to immediately authenticate and start charging because you can lose five or 10 minutes at every charging stop if the, if there's any kind of software issue and it can charge at a much slower rate. So that, that's why the, doing these runs in electric cars are so much more difficult than doing it in a gas car. And doing it in a non-Tesla car makes it so much harder for th than doing it in a Tesla electric car because the Tesla supercharger network is unparalleled you pull up you plug in the darn thing works and 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 that's it but with every other network electrify america included it's a crapshoot you roll the dice on whether there's going to be a communication issue whether you're going to get the full amount of energy so this like if 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 kyle pulls this off that's amazing if he makes these 28 stops is it you know and and yeah. doesn't have one of them hold them up for an hour which can happen. It's yeah, happened it to me. It can derail the whole trip. It, it, der it derails the whole thing. So this this <laughs> this is really really a tough trip. And uh, you know, if you do do it, like that's kudos to you and to Electrify America. Well, we got to the give them credit if yeah. if it works. You know, they we we've been working with Electrify America. They're aware of the trip. They've I believe sent engineers to almost every station we're stopping at to uh, work on them. They've done back end diagnostics on every 350 kilowatt that we're charging at. We have real time charging status in our phones, so we know what's going on with the chargers. Uh, we have a direct line to their customer support teams. We have a direct line to their uh, head of technology, direct line to their CEO. Uh, you know, so if, if, if we are stranded in any way, uh, they can hopefully reset it remotely. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. We have spotters across the country as well. Tom's going to be our first. Uh, and so Tom's going to lead us out of New York City, leave about 20 minutes ahead of us, get us to Pennsylvania, let us know of any traffic, weather conditions, police, uh, anything that we need to be aware of along the way. And then we have people that we're going to be meeting along the country that are uh, prepping today, I guess, to, to meet us at the Chargers, head to the next, reserve us a 350 kilowatt and go. I don't know. I'm, I'm really... Uh, I'm nervous. You know, we've done this before in the Tesla. Like Tom said, we, we hold the record still currently, but uh, I really want to tell the story that the public networks are, are first off, the, the infrastructure is faster than Tesla superchargers. We have 350 kilowatts across the whole country. The Taycan's the right car for a 270 kilowatt peak. In range mode, it decouples the rear motor so it can really travel some serious uh, uh, speed with good efficiency. 
And uh, we have the perfect spec Tycon, ultimate road trip, aero wheels, big battery, 4S, the efficient version, thermally and noise insulated glass. So it's uh, gonna stay hopefully warm inside and cold outside. How do you fit in the back seat? Yeah, um, with your seat there was, there pretty was, much all the way up, not, not that bad. We're gonna be battling very cold temperatures in Colorado, single digit Fahrenheit temperatures. Um, Drew has friends uh, in Vail. There's Drew right over there. Drew is one of our co-pilots. Drew has friends in Vail that will have uh, uh, plow trucks ready for us to plow the road. If, yeah. if needed, if needed. If needed, we could pull out, make some calls, and uh, exactly. get our own snow plow because we have uh, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires on the car, which is uh, not the ideal tire for cold temperature driving. I also got a flat tire in the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S yesterday. Uh, thanks to Tom, because uh, we were on the phone. He said, like, hey, you were there, right? I uh, literally, we, I was like, hey, Tom. And it's, oh, I got a flat tire. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you said. Was, hey, Tom, how you doing? And all of a sudden I heard, oh, we got a flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess we're hanging out now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we have a, a discount tire patch in the front left tire. They, they assure me it will be the strongest point of the tire, though. Uh, so I'm just going to pretend that that never happened and we're going to bump the tire pressures up to like 48 PSI, I think maybe something like that. So we got to do that for sure. I'll ask the guys at Porsche to do that. We got to run it through the car wash with the extra wax, get some more slipperiness. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think we're good. We just had some pizza. It's the first time I've eaten in two days really. And, um, I don't know. It's, uh, it, it, it all comes down to the navigation in the car working and the charging status, uh, uh, charging stations uh, actually providing us maximum speed. I have no question we'll make it to LA. I, I think we will, I just said, now I say that, but I think we'll make it to LA. Uh, but will we make it there, you know, being able to pull these types of speeds, you know, this 270 kilowatts, that's what we need because it's colder temperatures. The car is less efficient than our Model 3. We're taking the Northern route we have to take the northern route because there's a charging gap of 360 miles on the I-40 route, the southern route. Would have been great, but honestly, actually this time of year, we have a massive storm that we're avoiding uh, that's running across the southern US. So we are actually getting great weather going the northern route, just cold temps, but no wind. So I guess we'll get the car and get up to New York tonight. See if we can do this thing. What do you guys think? It all comes down to charging. If the Electrify America stations all work, you plug in, you authenticate, it immediately starts charging. I think you're going to do it. I think that's, that, to me, that's the story, unless the car has a problem, but we're going uh, yeah, to pretend that's not won't. the issue. If, 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 if Electrify America comes through, there's going to be a new Cannonball run record for electric cars. If there isn't a new record, there's one of those 28 stops or more than one of those 28 stops it was the reason why it didn't happen. Yeah, it's definitely not gonna be the Porsche's fault that we don't get the record. I think that car is gonna be fine. I mean, the navigation's one thing, but I'm talking, you know, the battery's still gonna be warm without preconditioning. We'll be driving it hard. It's gonna be 86 degrees rather than 93 degrees. Um, so maybe we'll get 180 kilowatts into this, instead of 270, which is still more than we charged with the Tesla. Exactly. Uh, because I'd say our average charging power was 130 kilowatts over the session. Yeah. Uh, because we, again, le left in that car at about 50%. Drew uh, flew in last night. We picked him up at the wrong airport. We went to JFK first. <laughs> and we're like, we're at passenger pickup C. And you're like, me too. <laughs> but he was at LaGuardia. <laughs> so so we, we're off to a kind of a rocky start here. But what, what do you think we're going to be able to do? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I guess. Uh, so my first, uh, you know, cannonball and, uh, you know, I just... But not your first hardcore driving event. Right, no. So, yeah, I know how to drive fast, but um, to take into consideration all the other variables uh, yeah. will be will be really interesting. So, um, it's a giant yeah, math problem. A giant math problem at speed. Uh, that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. So. Yeah, because one of the balances we have to uh, have is we're going to be balancing, uh, you know, <laughs> driving very quickly and having someone say, oh, wow, they're really going fast. Like, what an idiot versus they're going fast, what an idiot, I'm calling the cops. Sure. So it's uh, we're not gonna be blowing by trucks at high speed, we're not gonna be blowing by other cars at 100 plus, we're not gonna be passing on the right hand side, we're gonna be respectfully cruising, going as quickly as we can without affecting other people. And uh, we spec to the car, of course, with Porsche, it's dark gray on the aero wheels, just looks like a gray blob going down the road. It's the least aggressive looking Taycan you can possibly get. So hopefully that will be to our advantage. We also time in our videographers coming with us. 
What do you think? How's this going to go? What are you concerned about? I the, My main concern is the charging. Um, I know how the Tesla charging situations work because you can just show up and plug it right in. Uh, but I've never used an Electrify America station before besides like uh, we, test with you. Yeah, we've done a couple, but yeah, um, never, never like this. Never where it really mattered how fast we charged. Right. And this, that's my main concern. Not really with speed on the road. It's just, will we be able to show up at 2% plug in charge for five minutes and go right away? Or do we have to sit there for 10 minutes and go? That's going to be the make it or break it. And the five minute charges are going to be again up to 30 or 40% where we have just a short stretch to the next charger. There's no reason for us to charge at slower speeds. We've done this many times on many trips and Tom can attest to it. It's faster to stop more often and charge during peak rates than to charge it all the way up to 80, 90%. Um, and it, it just works out that way. Well, guys, let's take a nap. Let's get the car prepped and head over to New York. We got to go to Paul Miller and pick it up. I haven't even called to see what's going on with it yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that pizza was delicious. Thanks for <laughs> suggesting that place, Tom. <laughs> yeah, Drew, did you realize this was going to be such a tough trip? Uh, well, you know, I think you, uh, you sold it well. I needed Drew's driving skills for this trip, so uh, I didn't really no. tell him everything about how some of this might be difficult. Now, now it all makes sense. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's a Tycon. We're going to do it no problem. We're supposed to be three hours faster. <laughs> yeah. Easy. We'll just cruise. All right. So now we're heading over to Paul Miller. I'm going to go check on the Porsche, see how their software is coming along. I love clear tail lights. Yeah. There she is. Don't know the update. We'll have to ask them. They're just, uh, I guess, looking at this Cayenne right now and then see what's going on with our car. Well, we got the car washed. It still doesn't know where it is, but uh, nothing we can do to fix it. We just collected the car. Drew's testing it out. You've driven other Taycons. What do you think of the old man range mode spec on this one? Uh, it seems perfectly suited for the job at hand. I uh, totally agree. The massaging seats in particular. <laughs> yes, that is very nice. <laughs> so we're just cruising along now, heading back to uh, Tymon's parents' house here in Far Hill, New Jersey, which is where we've been basing the start of this trip. We got to get all the GPS stuff in this car. Got to get the uh, radar detector mounted. Yep. All the good stuff. And then uh, maybe a little nap shower and then we'll be off the road. just uh, gonna get it charging up here on the 240 volt we're about eight hours until our leave time we're gonna get all the camera gear ready get all of our packages unboxed we're at 70 percent state of charge let's get this thing packed up get over to the red ball we have almost everything against us right now for this run is my guess wish us luck some pre-trip thoughts here this is gonna be a long trip Everything's kind of against us, but we have the right team. We understand electric cars. We understand DC fast charging technology. We understand charging infrastructure. We understand most of the protocols between the car and the chargers. Again, not much we can really do except plug and unplug, but little tricks like lifting up on the handle to make sure the communication pins touch, things like this might be able to help. Um, it's gonna be a long video. We will have a short recap on out of spec reviews, but this is gonna be like our full thing. So right now what I'm doing is I really wanna to get to bed and sleep. We're about seven hours until we leave. I'm booting up our GPS unit here, make sure it's calibrated, get all of our settings right. Uh, this is what we're gonna use as our Bible to cat, uh, measure our average speed and distance time, make sure we're tracking where we need to be on the trip. You join me in the Taycan now. We've charged it up to 90, well, is that 100%? We ran the heater pulled it down, just kicked on charging to pull it back up to 100%. It's 10.18 p.m. We leave at 1. I have the radar detector mounted here. We have a we have it plugged into the 12-volt uh, in the side. We have our Garmin unit right here, but I don't know how I'm going to power that yet. Probably just with a splitter into another 12-volt makes the easiest thing. Again, not our car. Can't really hardwire anything in here. Um, interesting that this gauge says 100%. This one says 99, weird software things with the Porsche. We still can't get it to connect. We have to use the guest account on the car because of this. Our SIM card's there. Our navigation still is freaked out. We're just going without it. Everything's good. Time and, just, uh, time and Drew are showering, getting ready for the drive. I took a nap, like I mentioned. Man, this is going to be freaking awesome. Long video. All right, we're leaving. Do you guys think we can do this? You better do it. Yeah. 
<laughs> Hell yeah. We don't take no for an answer. <laughs> you hear that, Timon? Okay, looks like he's paying my ticket. So we're here at Tom's place at the old Nona's Pizzeria, right? Yeah. Nona's restaurant. Now it's a bikery. I don't know what that is. You can see it over here. Bike shop and a nail salon. <laughs> All right. And this used to be a gas station before I bought the property and built it. So now it's an electric car charging station. Now it's communicating to the car. So what we're doing here is we're, what about 15, 18 miles from Red Ball. We're DC charging the car for two reasons. One, we drove it super aggressively over here to heat up the battery pack best we could. I think we gained 16 degrees. We went from 60 degrees to 76 degrees Fahrenheit on the battery pack. Uh, we are DC charging the car now and it is working, which is great. This is a 24 kilowatt DC charger. We're gonna charge it up to probably 95%, although it just said fault, please unplug. Um, so that's the intention. Then we're gonna go to the red ball, finish charging at 100%. Let's see if we can get this to work. It says charging. Oh, there it goes, it's going. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So the car finally called for power. 22 kilowatts. That's what it should be delivered, 22, 23. Yep, 22.2 kilowatts. Is this, is this a sign of things to come? This has been my whole week. This is a 600 volt charger, right? So that's the first time we've used the DC booster because we've always used electrified merit stations. So maybe that just has never been used on the car and it just got reset today, right? It had cobwebs on it. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they reset every module on the car. So everything we're doing is if it's seen it for the first time. So maybe and that's what needed to happen. These stations are a little wonky. These these 24 kilowatt IES stations that ChargePoint uses. Yeah. So I've had instances where people have had the vehicle um, take a couple times to charge, but usually everybody ends up charging. Doing a little shopping while the car's on the charger. It's a 24 hour convenience store here. Getting some extra Excedrin. We got all the essentials, Red Bulls, Jack Links, beef jerky, Reese's Pieces, you know, we are, road tripping kings here. Um, let's see what else we can find. How much do you think this is gonna cost in snacks? <laughs> yeah, that's right, you gotta pay our rent. Yeah, uh, Tom owns this building. Tom owns this whole property here because we're charging here. So uh, at least you'll keep the lights on this month. Exactly. You know, you'll get your rent check. That's good. You're, paying, you're, you're, you're subsidizing the rent. Yeah, there you go. So I need how much water it actually <laughs> Gotta get the snacks. Wow. Well, hey, good news, it approved. That's a lot. Start to the trip. <laughs> and they're not gonna stop. You're not so stop Us three. Yeah. 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 Non stop. <laughs> We're gonna try and do it faster than anyone before in an electric car. It's a race. Oh, really? Yeah. We're not allowed to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Oh, Tom. Do we, do we have your permission to, to put you in? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's better just to not ask. <laughs> oh, yes. Got the snacks. Back to the charger. <laughs> You can also put some of stuff behind, like on the seat next to the back seat. All right, we have arrived to the Red Ball in the Taycan. We have 92% uh, state of charge, battery temps around 80 degrees. We're doing all the, the social stuff. Tom, you're going to leave about 10 minutes ahead of us, right? So 10 or 15 minutes. I mean, I don't want you passing me. Right, so maybe that should be right Pretty around soon. now. Yeah. And, uh, we're gonna do the, the intros for the videos and stuff. And then, then we're gonna be getting out of New York. There's a lot of Port Authority at the tunnel. Yeah. So we're gonna go slow through there. But as soon as we're in the tunnel, it's it's put to the floor. I'll, I'll try <laughs> to not let you pass me till we get to Pennsylvania. Right, that sounds good. Tom, you're heading out first. You're our first spotter. Thank you so much for all of your help. We got it. I'm gonna get you through Jersey to Pennsylvania with no trouble. All right, time to go see what this Model 3 can do. Good luck, guys. Yep, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully he gets all the cops' attention before us. <laughs> right, yeah, there you go. Good plan. All right, let's reset the nav units, the GPSs, make sure all of our tracking is good, and we'll be ready to go. We were gonna use this to tell it what chargers we were going to go to, and now we uh, we unfortunately can't, so the car can't precondition the battery pack 
to get warm before a DC charger because again, the car will only charge fast when we are dead and when the battery pack is anywhere between 87 and 93 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, we're gonna need every last drop of uh, heat uh, we can. This first stretch, let's load up the navs. We have a Bible of our charging stations that we're gonna be stopping at. So we're gonna pull that up. Lost satellite reception. That's not a good sign. And we're gonna program in the first charging stop here and just drive it really hard to get there. Police along the way, man. We have the Escort Max 360C. We're gonna load up the Escort app here, make sure that it all connects and everything's good with the uh, connected services there. We have 92% state of charge. We're gonna put the car in range mode. This will lower the car all the way down to the ground. It will prioritize front wheel drive. It actually decouples the rear motor with a clutch. So uh, it will only kick it on if we go big power, which we may do on this first stretch. This might be our most aggressive stretch here. We have uh, CarPlay ready to go. Let's run no, why well, won't this shut off? No air conditioning. Do you agree? Yeah. Just to start. Absolutely. No heat, no AC. Yeah. We'll go back to CarPlay. Battery temperature is 79 degrees, really not bad. 46 outside, 129. Are we getting ready to go here? Let's do it. Okay, so. Do you need to pay? Yeah, but we have to leave at 1.30 a.m. Okay, Waze is good, Glimpse is good. Car is on, we're into drive. Let's reset our, okay, lights off. Uh, Pull that back up to reset really quick because we want to make sure the time is exactly when we leave. Reset fields. Yep, as soon as we tick over to 1.30 a.m. here on the Apple time, that is when we will go. We are in drive. It'd be great to time it with that traffic light, but it is what it is. Go. Reset, reset, reset. Five seconds. Five seconds. All right, let's go. Green light right off the bat, guys. Green light off the bat. <laughs> All right, come on. We're gonna be efficient here. We're putting recuperation, regen, off throttle on. We have another green light. Let's get through it. Oh my God. This doesn't happen often. Come on, taxi cab. Okay. This Toyota Sienna might Police be our, ahead. okay, we have to turn right here, please go, 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 I know you can't go right on red, green, <laughs> okay, and then where do we turn left, not here obviously, two blocks up, on, on 34, 34th. <laughs> this is freaking awesome, I know they're supposed to time to get you through them, yeah. And now we have some police activity already here. Yeah. Down to it. We have the stopwatches. Nice Volvo cross country there. Look good and white. Holy sh why is this guy getting out of his freaking car? it right yeah good man that was an obstacle course right yeah, there yeah. wasn't it well, good, good uh, we've got fine. cops just outside Lincoln Tunnel on Jersey side right and um, cop route 3 east okay through the tunnel here we go we have energy to burn If you, if there's any emergency, uh, just call us, okay? okay? Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. All right, no All problem. Right. Come back. Oh man, this is such a nasty spot. So our, our spotters were awesome. They let us know about a police officer down here at the bottom of the hill, uh, right at the diner. I imagine that's him parked there on the side. Yep, looks we're like it. We're just going 56 and a 55. Hopefully, we're good. Uh, I don't imagine why we wouldn't be. And. Uh, sitting there. Nice. 
All right, we're getting on 80 West here. We're just taking it super easy. There's so many little hiding spots for cops to be. Um, we don't need to get any issues this early on, but I'd say we made it out of New York City, like we were just saying, unbelievably quick. As clean as can be. Clean as can be, yep. So uh, that, that was good. We're just gonna, because we have some energy to burn, sport mode, back to ways. And uh, sport mode inherently doesn't use any more power. But what it does do is just give the car a little bit more control. 80 West. All right, people. Come on. <laughs> I'm just cruising in this Kona. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Nice. So much. Safe travels, happy new year. You guys are the best. We owe you a big one. And uh, that was so cool of you to come out this late at night for us. Thank you. Uh, it's our pleasure. Believe me, our pleasure. All right. Well, we will uh, see you later on. Okay. You take care now. Yeah, bye, bye. bye. See you guys. Bye-bye. Taking our first exit. Drew's got the Electrify America app loaded up on our account right now. As soon as we start pulling in the parking lot, there's only one of the two 350 kilowatts available. So he is going to reserve that charger for us. And uh, I don't want to go that way. And uh, you can already tell the roads are uh, salted. We've been battling some slick conditions. Not icy yet, but miles. very cold. Right. Uh, cold rain for sure. We're at 37 degrees. And uh, just uh, getting ready to swipe on that charger. Oh, yeah, see, that's just the traffic sign. So we're okay. Where's the, is there a second entrance? Yeah. Right, here we are. Turn right. And does it let you activate now? Yep. Right, just so on the 350? Yep. Cool. So we're activated. It's this one here on the end. Nice. And I'll get it close because these chargers are far. We're in park. DC. Ports open. It's going to get us charging. Go the first charge. How are we gonna do here? We're at 87 degrees Fahrenheit. We need 93 for max speeds. How are you doing in the back seat there, buddy? <laughs> Good. Holy! Shit. 242 kilowatts without battery preconditioning on our first leg. Okay. Awesome. This might That's, freaking work. That might work. This might freaking work. Holy! Shit. All right, we're <laughs> we have really bad weather, so we're gonna overcharge a little bit here on the first. We don't need to get too ballsy on the first stretch. So uh, I already stopped and peed on the side of the road. I don't know if we got that. It was full ABS, pee, and back to wide open throttle. <laughs> and yeah, we're just having a blast, I guess. 246 kilowatts. Look, we're not getting the 270, but 246. No complaints here. That's good. We are here at Sheets, which is one of my favorite places, but we're not going inside. We're charging up here at first stop. Honestly, great charging session. We're sitting at 150 kilowatts right now following the internal charge profile. Just the same, same profile that we just uh, analyzed when we were at Tom's house earlier today. Look at this, just sitting at 153 kilowatts. Charging is by the minute here in this state, which when you're charging at these speeds is so inexpensive. Look at that, $2.88 for 41 kilowatt hours. Uh, they can't legally charge by the kilowatt hour in this state of uh, Pennsylvania, so they've cho chosen a really cheap rate. Um, that is pretty amazing. Like, that's almost free electricity at that point. Anyway, we are uh, going to take the juice while we can. We have a 131-mile stretch. However, my dad just called and said we have snow coming along the way. So we are going to overcharge slightly. We're going to be expecting a lower average speed, even though we were already pretty conservative with the weather on this particular drive. Once we get out of this weather system, though, the reason we chose this time window to leave was because we will have an awesome clean run across the country. Tycon's performing wonderfully. Certainly very uh, thirsty in these weather conditions, but uh, tire pressures bumped up to 50 PSI made for a little bit of fun on those slippery roads. I think we're going to hold them up high though because we will use it for the rest of the run. So I imagine this will be one of our slowest average speeds on this leg. Charge up and head out. 
man, what a giant math problem this is, especially without the navigation in the car. We have no predictive arrival. I have to do all the elevation calculations myself. We're just running numbers the whole time. It's a blast. Our plan for this stretch was to unplug before we get under 150 kilowatts, or I should say right when we taper off 150. We just tapered from 150 to 112. Time in unplugging the car. We're gonna get the AC back in Eco Plus, which doesn't use the heat. We're gonna use heated seats, heated steering wheel. We're gonna run the car in range mode, of course, and we are a little bit worried about this run, this drive because of weather, but uh, we're going in reverse and we are getting out of here. So, seat belts, let's go. That was a perfect charging session. We just hit 20% state of charge on this drive. We're battling some snow out ahead, and uh, we are, again, this is balanced uh, motoring, so we have 35 miles to our destination, 41 miles of projected range based off our previous driving. I think we are uh, on our last downhill descent. We have one more climb. So we have a uh, six mile buffer to eat up on the climb. We should arrive to this charger at very low state of charge. Uh, the snow is increasing and the roads are getting slipperier. So we are just going to be uh, increasingly cautious, especially around the corners. And then right after this stop, it should clear up. We should be good as we get through uh, the rest of Pennsylvania. Battery's gonna be a little bit cold, that's why we're only getting 173 kilowatts. And, uh, you know, I think um, that was hopefully the worst leg of this trip. Snow, slippery conditions, right on the edge of grip a couple times, and uh, pulled in at 5%, up to 177 kilowatts. As the battery warms up, so should uh, the charge rate should increase. And, and we, we need to really pick up the pace here now. Yeah, so I guess if we had the preconditioning, we would have gained, yeah, 257 now. At least that's what's being delivered. So the car is using a lot to heat itself up. Uh, that's fine. Charger can deliver it. Car can handle it. Uh, I guess all we would have gained was that zero to that four to 13 percent increase in speed if we had the on route preconditioning. Sure. Yep. So we just left the charger at Du Bois. Dubois. Dubois. I think. Um, we with 44% state yeah, of charge. Yeah, with 44% state of charge, we're leaving early to go to one that's 30 minutes away. Do a quick top up and then go to Ohio. Was right. So our our planned charging stop in Youngstown, Ohio, was is the next planned one. But uh, we, we had checked the weather and we believe that uh, we are at the tail end of the snow. So uh, these chargers are so far off the highway. I mean, we're going in the same direction as the highway, which is good. Uh, they kind of run parallel. But we, we figured, let's, let's get on the highway, get some miles under us, some, some hard miles. Let's go quick. Uh, because we were already tapered down to 150 kilowatts. And we know we can get 270 at the next one. So the, the plan is to go to Clarion and top up as fast as possible and um, that, that's sort of the idea do more stops for shorter periods of time the cannonballing way so we're at our quick stop here in clarion pennsylvania and uh, rather than going all the way around the parking lot we just decided to stop right here on this little service road and plug in the uh, charger to the back side of the car or i should say around the back side of the charger and that worked perfectly. Are we charging yet? No. No? Yeah, this handshake process is really causing us serious time here. I don't know why it's got to take so long. I mean, look, you, you can have a, a communication in just a couple seconds, and this takes a long time. So uh, Drew's just sitting in the back seat there resting up. I'll take on this leg to Ohio, and then I think uh, Drew might be next up in the driver's seat from Ohio onwards for a little while. Come on, handshake, come on, this is crazy. All right, well, this charger was really buggy and actually uh, faulted out, couldn't get it to work, so we backed the car up over here, and now we are uh, charging on this 350 kilowatts charger. We were doing 200 plus kilowatt, and now we're at all the way down to 195, which makes no sense because the battery's nice and warm in the car. They're doing snow removal over here at Walmart, and uh, we're gonna charge up just enough to get to our next stop. 
click the button. Wait for the light to come on. Now you can pull it out. Yep. We're into gear. We're just gonna adjust it here. Okay. Make a U-turn, then turn right. So, we had some issues here in Girard, that's why we're just getting to filming now. We're, we're charged up to 30% already. Uh, we won't be here much longer. Um, we plugged into this 350 kilowatt, wouldn't even work at all. Then we plugged this one in and it charged both times we've tried it, but then faulted out right after starting to charge. This 150 kilowatt is currently delivering 143 kilowatts to the car. That's what's being delivered. Uh, the next charger is Sheffield, Ohio, 86 miles away, 350 kilowatts. Both are working. We're going to check the station success. So 1231 at 12 a.m. So literally just a few hours ago, number three worked. So that's, that's what be the one. these two also said. These two also said that? This one was charged last night yeah they said this one worked yesterday yeah and that one was charged the day before well look i think it's got to do something with the tycon it just pulls so much power it freaks things out i don't know uh... yeah because it went to 270 and then cut to five and yeah, said the, the old signet hpc stations the new signet ones have been flawless so far um fingers crossed so we're just going to charge up to maybe 40 45 percent we have two spotters ahead of us right now and uh, they're looking for police which will be great tycon's looking pretty dirty and uh looks really nice like this i think and i think drew's going to take on the first leg yep if you would like absolutely okay well, I'm, I'm ready for a little snack and snooze yeah, take, take <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, uh, this cost us five minutes of faffing about wouldn't you say roughly maybe uh, four minutes yeah yeah fine yeah. and and we're not charging at max speed so at least we're still doing 145 kilowatts that's good but it's not not 270 and we had the battery nice and hot here too because we shredded the last <laughs> section so uh you know mice multiple wide open throttles pulled in at seven percent i think and uh yeah seven percent it was going to be the perfect charging session but it wasn't meant to be <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to sit in the back all right, we're charged up to 48%. We have 86 miles to go. These freaking cables get so stiff in the winter time. There you go. And uh, Drew's got this thing ready to go. I'm supposed to be taking a nap here in the back seat, very comfortable back seat, uh, but we uh, just did some calculations. Looks like if we can do an overall average of 64 miles per hour, then we will break our current record. Right now our overall average is what time in? 64. So if we maintain pace, then we're good. Keep in mind, we've already had long handshakes, snow, and we have good weather going forwards, but we also have rocky mountains and steep inclines. So. We're going to make up time where we can. We're definitely on pace though, which is good. And uh, uh, and we haven't been off to an amazing start yet. Did we go past them yet? No, right here. Yes, I'm still here. Thanks. I was here for you. Um, now I have it. Um... No, that's okay. Thank you. Happy New Year. Wow, you're so nice. <laughs> that guy was really slow. Yeah, terribly slow. He like he like needed to like boom out. Yeah, that was that was a full almost one minute. He's like the slot that the DMV in that yes. movie. <laughs> Two percent arrival. Nice work, Drew. Optimizing every last bit of energy we had there. 
at the last two stations, the uh, older Signet units, both 350 kilowatts, and now these 350 kilowatts, so four units uh, won't charge the Taycan. So we're resorting to the 150s. It worked at the last station. Let's see, does this one work? Ramping up. I think it should be fine. Yes, okay, yeah. 3%, cool. Um, let's call and get these reset and see if that'll help. So we're running into the issue where these older Signet units will not charge the Taycan. They end up delivering too much power, more than 270 kilowatts. And uh, sorry to get time and peeing on film. <laughs> and so the car can't accept it. So we're stuck with uh, 150 kilowatt stations. Anyway, we're gonna go to the halfway point in hopes that we can get faster charging. These are our spotters right here. And uh, they're gonna head out right now. We're gonna charge up to maybe 35, 40%. Uh, again, we're only doing 143 kilowatts. It's really bad, actually. We, we definitely need more. So we're hoping the next service center can deliver 350 kilowatts to the car. That's what we need to keep this going. Otherwise, we're going to start falling behind on our average speed pace. So uh, I don't know where Drew is. He ran into the store, uh, but we got to go. So uh, that, that's what we're at. We are, we are fingers crossed that we can get these 350 kilowatt stations to work. They are still the same signets that were giving us problems at the last two stations, but Electrify America uh, has been in contact with us. They have their technical team working on it. Uh, keep in mind, this is New Year's, the day before New Year's Day, it's New Year's Eve, and they're, they're out there working on this project for us, so that's pretty cool. Again, we've arrived to this station where the 350 kilowatt older signet units just over boost provide 270 plus kilowatts to the car and unfortunately uh, the car just shuts off charging so I've checked on plug share pictures of the Electrify America stations going forwards and unfortunately we have these older signets all across this route for a significant portion at least until we get to Colorado I think I hope not uh, I hope I'm wrong but yeah these 350s just uh, there's a, a software communication problem uh, between the car and the chargers and we are not able to charge at max speed. Now, is this a problem on Porsche's side or on Electrify America's side? Not really sure, but it's all Volkswagen Group, so they really should have had this figured out two years ago, in my opinion. This is just uh, super frustrating, could cost us the record, but uh, we're gonna do a deep charge now because we're expecting these stations across the, the uh, next few stops. We're gonna charge it until it tapers off of 150 kilowatts and then go to the next one and just try and uh, keep the, the speeds a little bit lower and the consumption a little bit lower because we can't expect 270 kilowatt charging. We've decided to skip the next charger and we're gonna head to Mishawaka. All right, we've just unplugged here, charged it way up 77%, trying a new strategy here because the other one, the speed strategy was using a lot of juice. And we can only sustain that with 270 kilowatt charging. So time in, what's your plan for this drive? Nice and easy. Nice and easy. 80, 85. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. And, there's a cop in front of us, and, and put so. it put it in range mode. I don't know if I'm gonna use binoculars, but that's right. Someone must have told them we were going the wrong direction because, uh, dang, that's like the fifth <laughs> cop we've seen facing the wrong way. way. They're not doing a very good job here, are they? Uh, the New Year's Eve. Uh, New Year's Eve, yeah. Times dang. Square. Well, it's a good thing that we're going to do a deep charge then because we couldn't go fast from a police standpoint, and the car is uh, certainly, we have to base this off 150 kilowatt charging now. Uh, Coming into the tolls here, we got a card and ticket. Electrify America claims that they have pre-activated charger number three at Mishawaka. Don't go to the one that says lane closed. <laughs> and so we're gonna pull up there, it's a 350 kilowatt. We've been speaking to the head of technology. He claims that it's station specific, even though he's seen it at the last five stations, but he's confident that we will have a successful charging session. Here we are. I can't believe they have man ticket boots. Thank you. 
she was counting cash. Oh, uh, we got some buffer now. Oh. Holy Sienna minivan coming right for us, Batman. Indiana. Uh, we got to figure out what time we're going to get to Joylet. Uh, let me look. Oh, what a freaking oh, no. sneaky spot in there. Damn. Well, he was hidden how, so you far mean, back. You don't have an angle to, to read anybody's speed then. Well, he's not hitting radar. Right. He's just probably taking a nap. Yeah. But still, that's annoying. And I guess he's ready if somebody radios him. Or yeah, if someone radios in, he's in position. Electrify America has preconditioned the, or I should say preconditioned, has pre-authorized station number two and three, both are 350 kilowatts. We have to log the charging session details so we can add it to our total whatever we're doing, you know, our calculations as to how much this costs, how much energy we use. Uh, but they claim that these should work. We should see 270 kilowatts. I think it's a 30% chance. What do you guys think? I got my hopes high, 70%. 12%? At time it's at 70. So we have everywhere from 12 to 30 to 70 uh, percent chance of, of successful charging at 350 kilowatts. Fingers crossed we really need it. Our average speed is creeping up 63 miles an hour. Pull between two and three. Okay they're both activated. It says complimentary session I guess. Oh it's all icy. Be careful. All right let's they said try one of them first. I can't remember which. Try two first. I think you pulled too far forwards. Maybe not. Let's see. No, we're good. Okay, here we go. Plugging in and go. And are these the same units? I think so. Complimentary session. Connecting to vehicle. Connecting, connecting. Yes, these are the same Signet chargers that have been giving us issues here. Man, initiating, good. Handshake. Is it gonna go 270 kilowatts? Okay, come on, screen. I don't wanna hit continue too many times because it's charging at least. That's good. Ah, oh, God damn it. All right, let's try the other one. They said connector number two, click the button. Let me get over here. I do not think this is gonna work. I mean, I would be so surprised if this freaking works. Also, they were kind of hard to find all the way around the back of the mall. Gosh, charging. Do not get the power charge port flap if you're in a hurry. Gosh. Connecting to vehicle. Initiating charging, please give us 350 kilowatts or we don't need 350. We can, we'll, we'll take, we'll take 270. Feeling better? Oh, man. oh no, <laughs> that doesn't look good. Okay, thank you for choosing Electrify America. We had no option. <laughs> Three kilowatt, okay, 2% state of charge. 110, 130, 70. Nope. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna do it. 260 and yep, bricked. All right, so uh, I guess we're back to 150 kilowatts, uh, and well, you know what? Just pull it forwards right up over to this one. Let me get out the app and activate this bad boy here. So where are we? We're in University Park Mall. <laughs> nice skid to a stop. And this is number four. One, two, three, four. Ready. Swipe to start. Charge port open. Boom, boom, boom. Coming in hot. And er, how about that? I, I and Electrify America says I I'm wrong. I don't really think I am. This is giving the car too much power. It goes up to 264 plus kilowatts instantly. The car says, "Hey man, that's not cool." What are we up to? Initiating contactors. Gosh, who would have thought charging infrastructure would have been the hard part of this trip? No kidding. <laughs> Uh, we have a 111 mile stretch, so we need at least 70%, which is perfect for the 150 kilowatt curve. 2% charging, 134 kilowatts, as expected. It'll sit there all the way through. Maybe we can 
go shopping or something. I don't know. We're kind of blocking. <laughs> it's not like these work anyway for at least Tycon owners. We are charging up at 145 kilowatts, unfortunately, at the 150 station. Uh, that's about max speed we can expect for this state of charge. Again, it's 111 miles of driving to our next stop. I'm going to get the next stop in our phone uh, in ways for navigation. Again, this car doesn't have navigation, so we got to do everything the roundabout way this whole trip, really. And um, as soon as this thing tapers down below 135 kilowatts, we are out of here, I'd say. That's what she said. Hey. <laughs> Heading out of Mishawaka off to Juliet. Drew is piloting and uh, it's all about uh, the efficiency on this drive. Oh yeah. Continue straight. Still pretty good grip on these things. Ah, damn it. I hate doing that. We're pulling up to Joliet, Illinois. I'd say you did a great job navigating the car through Chicago traffic. Sounds like you've done that a few times. A little bit of practice. <laughs> and Timon, how was your nap? Fantastic. <laughs> Holy sh guys, it's working. 188 kilowatts and it hasn't bricked. And we're going into the Tycon. Drew's entire friends and family are here. Your car looks great, by the way, on Martian wheels. I have the same one, same ones yeah, on my car. Yeah. yeah, I know. We know a guy who's uh, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah, if you have a Tesla and you want cool wheels, Drew has Martian wheels. Uh, holy, sh we might be doing this, guys. 190 kilowatts. So now let's get the battery up to 93 degrees Fahrenheit, about 33 degrees Celsius. That's what 96 degrees Fahrenheit. We need that to get 270, but it should ramp up. Holy crap, this is amazing, amazing. It seriously doesn't get any better than this. Porsche Taycan, 256 kilowatts. We're ramping up, friends, 258. Holy crap, this is the first time these Signet HPC units have worked for us. The family is here. They've brought McDonald's and, uh, <laughs> and we have spotters to head out ahead of us. So this is freaking amazing. Time to do some calculations. We have 110 miles or so to our next charging stop. This is what we need to break the record. We need to average 64.2 miles per hour to break the record by one minute from this point forwards. I think this car can do it. I know the car can do it. We just need a couple of these 270 kilowatt chargers and good weather in the Rockies. Time it, are you pumped? Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling invigorated right now <laughs> at the Walmart here in Joliet. Illinois. We have all of Drew's family here meeting us. Good celebration too because this is the first Signet high power station that's delivering us 257 kilowatts. An unexpected positive charge. It is so cold outside. I'm shaking. The car is doing really well. It warmed up the battery temperatures by the time we hit about 8 or 9 percent and then ramped up to 260. We should fall off that ledge at 33 percent here soon but this is great. Great news. Gosh, I'm so cold. <laughs> oh, we got yeah. yeah, are we ready to rock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Bye, everyone. Let's go. All right, I've hit the stop button. Drew's getting in the car just now. We're saying goodbye to family. Please unlock. It just takes forever to unlock the charger. There we go. And charge for it. Uh, uh, Too fat to squeeze through here. Oh, you gotta move that seat up. <laughs> where am I, uh, All right, and I have headed? coffees back here. Let me get my yep, belt yep. done. And might want to take it a little slow so they don't uh, fall over. Ruin their seventy-five hundred dollars. Hi everyone, thanks interior. for coming out. What a nice family you have, Drew. They're so supportive. I love your oh, grandma. Yeah. She's like, hell yeah, we'll go. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm just aimlessly getting to a road. Slippery. All right, let's try number three. It's literally straight ice. Holy crap. I'm like holding on to the charger for dear life here. 
that was better than I expected. When it's really cold, these cables turn really stiff. You can barely bend them. So here we are activating. I'm just going to get this one ready, the app ready, just in case. Nope. Ah, hell. All right, not worth retrying. We're going 150. Come on, remove. 350 in, or 150 in. Activate. We've got this down. I have to quit out of the Electrify America app, reopen, select number four. It says it's already connecting to vehicle. Uh, one, two, three, four, swipe, plug in, swipe, initiating charging. <laughs> I don't have very good balance. Come on, talk to each other. We're at what, 1% on the Taycan? Show that really quick. All right, what are we gonna do here? Do we try this handle? See if this one will reach. Number two. Do you want me to? They said number three was the one to use here. And they said this one was not so great. But here we are. Come on. Okay. And number, number four, right? Swipe. Worst case, can you get back in the driver's seat? Because we're going to try number handle number one on that one. Error, unable to start. Number four. Let's try one last time. Authorized. Initiating charging. It doesn't matter. The account's not the issue. It's the handshake. Looks like it's working. Looks like it's working this time. Do we try the other... Are we charging on the car? We're, we're charging. Yep, 100. Okay. And How much? 31. 31? 131. That's pretty good. Merging back on the highway now and uh, charged up to 55 or 58%, I guess, at the uh, Electrify America 150 kilowatt station. The 350 didn't work. Um, we just received word from Electrify America that they brought in some of their engineering teams uh, away from their family here on New Year's Eve. Honestly, you can't can't fault them for not trying here. Uh, they are definitely uh, all, all for getting us across the country on these 350s. Uh, we're, we're learning that the issue is the car that is asking for too much power and faulting the charging session. We knew this. Uh, you know, they, the car has to tell the charger, here's how much power you can give me. And obviously it's sending the wrong signal. And so they're kind of just like, hey, it's not our chargers. And I'm like, well, hey, you're all Volkswagen in my book and it should work. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess it's hard, but you know, this is the type of thing that they, they should test in their lab and make sure it works. I mean, uh, I guess they're working on it now, finding a solution. So we're just gonna keep rocking here. We need to average again, 64 miles an hour. And I think uh, Drew's doing a good job of that right now. Thank you, sir. He could be an angry elf. Oh, you got the wrong one there, buddy. Welcome to Williamsburg. Starting the charge. Quite a bit of snowfall here, it looks like. Plugging in. <laughs> Don't fall. I'm gonna try not to. Come on. Arr! Why don't you go in? Please plug in. It is. All right. It doesn't seem like it's machined to fit very well. Fog okay. first. Not that one. Let's try this one. Okay, we're in. Work, please work. What, what state of charge are we at? Four. Porsche. Okay, Porsche, please don't ask for more power than you need. And what's our battery temperature? A little bit colder, right? 85, 84? 84. 84, good. We're kind of thinking that so it worked before because the battery was a little bit colder and it said it couldn't take max power because it was cold. But when we pull them with a hot battery, it can pull everything. 
150 kilowatts. Yes, yeah, so I think, I do think that theory is possible. Hell yeah, that dude's drifting his Dodge Ram. So, so here's my theory right now. When we pull in with a hot battery, when the Taycan can pull max speeds, it says, hey Charger, give me everything you got. The Charger dumps way too much power and the Taycan says, whoa. When the battery is cold, there's another line of code that says, hey, I can only take 150 kilowatts right now. Don't give me any more. And uh, it's gonna be cold through the night. And then as it ramps up, then we'll get up to 240, 250. So this is my, my theory at least. I'm gonna take over the next few legs. Drew's done an amazing job, seriously, of driving. We uh, were optimized, we were just talking about it, at least to 99%. I don't think there was any way to have a better stretch, a uh, better driver for the stretch. It really was great. And uh, now we have a really good charge session. We're only doing 150 kilowatts, but that's fine. It'll warm up and, and, and increase. Gotta love it. We just tapered below 150 kilowatts instantly. We know we can get more at the next station and we have plenty of range to make it there. 115 miles projected, only 101 to go. The guessometer is very accurate here. Timon is stopping the charging session, ripping the charging. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't rip the uh, cable off the car, or rip the uh, port off the car. We're gonna get us in reverse. Uh, key not detected. Uh oh, who has the key? There we go, we're good. Doesn't matter, somewhere in the car. And uh, we're just gonna freaking rip it out of here. In the drive, full throttle. Shredding it. I think this is not gonna reach. Uh, yes it will. 342. God damn. What's our battery temperature? 85. 85, so that's basically where I wanted it. I think this is just enough for it to think it's too cold to get max speeds. We have another 350 kilowatt here that we can try. Yes, yes! I think we got it, guys. I think we have it figured out. Holy I think we got it figured out. Dan, this is the most complicated road trip. Like, yes, it might. If we do this, it, w it might technically be faster to road trip this car. But but until they figure out these software bugs on the car and charger side. Yeah. I, I mean, it's fun for us, but like... <laughs> 188 kilowatts. Holy crap. Yeah. 240 kilowatts, guys. 240? 240. 85 is optimal temperature, baby. 85, that's the move. 245. Why is the car in turtle mode? Probably because you slid it. <laughs> yeah, we kind of did drift it into here, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, I told you we weren't messing around anymore. Uh, Mid-session, um, at 41%, it randomly stopped at three, or it was at Roughly to 160 kilowatt, would you say? Uh, 150, I think. Um, it, it just randomly just shut off. We didn't touch anything. We sat at 200 and something kilowatts. It's not like the car was asking for tons of power. Uh, that's that's the second time. So so we're good now. Of course, this Porsche does get free three years of charging with Electrify America, but we want to see how much it costs to drive across in a spirited way like this. So we are paying for the charging ourselves. We also don't want to. Uh, have any obligation to Porsche, you know, have them pay for our charging for our experiments and things like this. So ethically, I, I think it's better if we just pay for our own charging for these types of events. Well, I'm having a nice charcuterie board in the Taycan right now. And uh, we have 73 miles of predicted range, 76 miles to go. The good news is we have a big downhill after this hill that I've accounted for, so we're okay. But just in case, we're locking the speed at 80 on Inno Drive. So the Porsche is handling most of our driving here with, of course, monitoring by me. Uh, there's no one around. If I was in traffic, I would never take my hands off the wheel like this. Uh, on the systems here, we have another glitch that's not good. This whole screen, the center operating cluster is gone. That doesn't do, oh, it does work. Can I turn it? Anyway, it hasn't been working and uh, I can't turn my heated seat off. So my butt is on fire and nor can we 
change the interior temperature. We can only put the air conditioning in Eco Pro Plus, which just takes basically fresh air from the outside versus uh, conditioning it for the cabin temperature. So there's more Volkswagen glitches uh, right now. You know, look, I've, I've been a big proponent of Volkswagen Group. I love the ID4. I love the e-tron. I love the Taycan. I, I love everything they're doing for electric mobility. And I've sort of been a slightly dismissive about all these software bugs, especially with ID3, like, oh, they'll get it figured out. Like, let's just see how they do it. They're massive car companies. They've been working on this forever. I, I don't know. This car's been out for a long time. This is a press car, so you, it has all, everything, you know, should have been looked over before it goes to us, especially considering the trip that we're taking it on. And it's like we have like four major issues with software. Hardware is great. No, no, no major issues there. Um, just, just software. Just make it work. So, but it's kind of sad. You've arrived at your destination. That's number two. That's the one they say it should work. So how do we pull up to that? Here, we're gonna go like this. That's the fake police. Okay, let's get this thing charging. We're at, uh, what are we at, 1%? 1%, number two, Electrify America. Gosh, we gotta quit out and reopen every time. Electrify America, Drew's gonna get us plugged in. Where are we, Council Bluffs. Number two. You need me to move forwards? The f cable. I can move forwards. No, it's okay. Okay. Good. Charger says, please plug in. Yeah, when there the cables get cold, they are impossible to move. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Battery's cold, 74 degrees. So if our theory is correct, we should have no problem charging here. Yeah, hey, we're charging here. Take a look. At least we were. Yeah, 153. Nice friends, so it is. We are we are rocking. I love the Taycan. It's pulling 150 kilowatts at one percent. Nothing else does that. That's what happens when you get a big buffer at the end of the, the bottom of the battery. Nice, looks good. Warming up. 165 kilowatts, baby. Good news. We're here in Council Bluffs, right here at the Walmart. Drew is going to get some tape. He's running inside. We have an idea to keep the battery a little warmer for the really frigid temperatures over the next. 12 to 14 hours, we think we're gonna tape up the air dam on the front of the Taycan to stop itself from cooling so much. Now there are flaps on the front that do open and close, but we kind of want to tape up this whole area. And uh, we had this idea before we left, but we kind of forgot about it until now. And we're like, ah, that could work. So uh, let's see what kind of charging speeds we're getting here. Now that it's had a chance to go up, we're at 150 kilowatt, 162. So as the battery warms up to maybe 75, 80, 90 degrees, then we'll get more and more power. But uh, definitely agree, and, and with my theory, I'm agreeing with myself, that the battery temperature is the reason we had all those problems on the 350 kilowatt stations. We are at 80 miles of projected range, which is really closer to 65, where we just tapered off of 200 kilowatts. We did 260, yeah. and we're down to, to 150. There's a charger that I had planned to stop at in 68 miles. That's, we could, if we manage the battery temperature, if we don't let it get too hot here, we could probably do another 260 kilowatt charge. Because now I think we figured out these 350s. Gotcha, yeah, okay. okay, so that's, and then option number two is charge all the way to a 150 mile stretch. Right, and then go all the way. The and then, then go like 80 all the way. So do we shred and charge at peak rates it's right off the highway. Because we're getting 150 now, we know we can at least get 150 there. Yeah. So we're risking very little yeah, by trying for a high so reward. We're not really gaining anything by staying here. We're gonna get 150 there no matter what. I mean, I say that. I'm glad this car is the $2,000 wood option. Yeah. We've been knocking this a lot. Seriously. Yeah, seriously, I, what, about 500 times this trip? Yeah. You know, it's, don't ever get a tyke on without the wood trim. It's $2,000, but so far it's been invaluable. Um, yeah, I, I agree with your, your intuition. Okay, so let's charge to 47%. 47, 
3% more, and then we'll head out. Right. Oh, really? Yeah, I think, I think so. Now it says authorized initiating. Yeah, that was weird. There's a little glitch, I guess. We've arrived at our next charger. It was only 60 miles. Got here in like, I don't know, half hour, something like this, uh, 40 minutes. Absolutely shredded it, getting great speeds. Uh, we were doing 250 kilowatts. We're now down to 200, but hey, that's better than the 150 we tapered to. So I'm definitely glad that we uh, pulled off and came over to this Casey's. The next charger is, uh, I think, 90 miles. We'll have to look, but uh, just uh, charge up until it tapers, see if we have enough uh, charge by the time it comes off 200 kilowatts to make it there and if we don't we'll charge up just enough to get there <laughs> who's going for some barbecue trips we have uh 86 miles to our destination we're going to charge to exactly 50 percent unplug and then run so are you ready to do the unplug dance let's do it let's uh get this thing we'll get it uh one more percent at 150 kilowatts 96 miles we have 700 feet of elevation gain here over 86 miles, it's gonna be pretty uphill. And uh, we had a great charging session. This was awesome. We are here at the next one in Nebraska with 1% remaining. I can hear things clicking over here in the charging hardware. Man, uh, <laughs> that was a pretty uneventful drive. Kind of ripped it in the beginning and then uh, had some stronger elevation than I thought, some more headwinds. So just took it easy to around 80, 85. Um, I think it's good. Hopefully this uh, battery is cool enough where if we don't kick off charging. We don't have to do that dance right now. Let's just keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, I think we're good. 140. Yeah, nice. 1% right here at a 350 kilowatt station. It's exactly what we want. That's how we optimize right there, guys. Oh, oh, oh yes. That is how we get the record. Unfortunately, not getting great speeds here. I think this is mostly because of uh, potentially a station limitation in the middle of nowhere. It's hard to pull the power, especially this late at night. It's possible that they've just uh, limited the total power output. Not sure. It's just pegged at 150 kilowatts. I know this one does have battery storage for uh, grid uh, support. It's a little battery storage disconnect uh, just behind the car. So that's, that's pretty neat. We'll charge this thing up. Uh, probably more than needed to get to the next one and then we'll go. Time it is unplugging us here at uh, 49%, just about half charge to go 70 something miles. Should be perfect. He's going to take on this leg. Drew and I are going to catch up on some sleep and then we will be off. No huge rush here, just need to maintain pace. like cow shit out here yeah it does. like actually it's so uh, bad we had a pretty poor charging session but it's 12 degrees out so i think we need to try and show up with a little bit of a warmer battery pack we're at 64 percent state of charge we have increase of elevation going into colorado right now uh, we never charged more than 150 kilowatts here or at the previous 350 kilowatt station which is just very odd uh, still charging pretty pretty good deep into the pack we're tapered down to 100 kilowatts now uh we're off to ogallala um let's see yeah just sitting at 103 kilowatts everything's still freezing i i'm i guess the cold weather you know how much can you really expect in, in this cold i don't know but uh cars performing well keeping us nice and toasty um uh, time in why don't you start up the heater now while we're plugged in and then uh, then we'll head out on onto the road so I'd say roll up the windows and get that thing running nice and warm for about two minutes and then we'll head out welcome to Ogallala we are hopefully gonna handshake and charge up here pretty chilly 15 degrees Fahrenheit nice work time in pulling in at uh three percent nicely done charging up hey good numbers here good numbers this is great we need more of that having a really fantastic charging session here in ogallala 
Uh, we should taper off 150 kilowatt here any second. And then as soon as we do, we will unplug and go. Our guessometer matches the way is predicted uh, mileage. I imagine we'll be driving in very similar conditions. Again, just a slight gain of altitude the entire way. And uh, yeah, couldn't ask for a better charging session. We just kind of ripped this thing at the max speeds and it's still doing 150 kilowatts at over 70%, which is really nice. We don't get to see that very often. Pulling out of Ogallala and we are off. Timon, you are awesome. Thanks for driving so much. Uh, animal. And uh, we are off to, not really sure where, but somewhere. Fort Morgan, Colorado. Now we are at Fort Morgan. We're just hopping along. How do you think that stretch went, Timon? Very good. It was very quiet. Yeah, it's just empty out here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's New Year's Day right now. So, not, nothing really going on. Yeah. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Are we in uh, Colorado now? I guess we are, yeah. Yeah, we've been here for an hour about now. Very nice. All right, guys, we are charging up here at the 350 kilowatt near our home here in Denver. And uh, we're very familiar with this place. There's the uh, supercharger 16 stall V3. Of course, we have a whole bunch of EA stations, tons of EAs, way more Electrify America stations by like five times as much than superchargers in Denver. And I think it has to do with Lyft using a lot of uh, their vehicles here, uh, being Kia Nero EVs. The drivers get a program to drive an electric car uh, and uh, they get free charging as part of that service uh, where they rent a Kia Nero EV from Lyft. Anyway, we are charging up here, hopefully a good session. We'll check on it in a, se in a second. We are tracking right on pace for our record. Um, the problem with that is the Rockies is tough. So we're really gonna have to optimize. We need fast charging and this is not it. It's only doing 111 kilowatts. We must keep an eye on this. We may have to switch to another one. Let's see, is this a 350 kilowatt? Yes, so we might go to number one just in case this doesn't ramp up by the time we hit 5%. Um, man, this is, uh, this is getting close and um, we're gonna have to absolutely shred. Now we are talking 245 kilowatts. That's what we needed. This 350 kilowatt number two just behind here was only delivering 111. So while that was plugged into the car at 5%, Drew activated this charger. So as soon as this one was ready to go, we unplugged the other one, plugged this one right in. Again, the handshake takes 30, 45 seconds, but it definitely was worth it because now we're getting 260 kilowatts to the car. This is the kind of charging we need. We cannot spend more than 18 minutes on average at chargers. We're gonna be spending a little bit higher than average here because we have huge elevation. But of course, on the other side of the Rockies going down into LA, we really have to be kind of cutting it real close. We gotta be pulling in dead. Welcome to Glenwood Springs, 350 kilowatt. Drew shredded it through the, the uh, mountains there. Great work, sir. I ran binoculars for the first time and didn't get car sick. Time and spotted in the back. That was a full effort. We had a great spotter. Sam, right? Sam. Sam was awesome, ripping his Volkswagen up ahead of us. We're at the 350 kilowatt. The battery's hot. It's at 96 degrees because we were shredding it. That's where we have the issues with charging on the other chargers, but here, it seems to have the opposite where it's not getting enough juice. So what kind of power are you seeing in the Porsche? 61, 61 here as well. What's the, what's the temperature of the battery in state of charge? It's 8% and battery temp. 93. And it doesn't seem, yeah, it seems to just be holding at 61. I'm gonna pre-select and activate the other 350. All right, let's see if these two talk to each other maybe a little bit better. And this one can give us a little bit more juice to the Porsche. So uh, let's see what time it's 6.55 a.m. Eastern or here, 6.54, I guess it is 6.55 a.m. here. It's kind of neat. Initiating, come on, we need big speeds here. We're really tracking close to the record. We're averaging good speeds. We need fast charging in order to do it. 
We can't spend more than 17 minutes. I think we've already spent two here, I'd say. What are we doing? 223 kilowatt, friends. Hell yeah. The ABB units love the Porsche. And did you put all this snow in here? Because the whole front end's covered. Okay, we won't. <laughs> I think that helped keep the battery cool. Nice and warm. <laughs> oh, at least the sun's coming up. <laughs> we had a really good run. Uh, can you pull forwards? That's a better click. Uh, yes, sir. The other one did not like to click in, so. I can't remember if they said two or three, but they're basically just saying use the 350s. Like, we know. <laughs> That's our goal. And they're so professional. Like, I've, I've spoken to these people. Like, they know me. I know them. They're so nice at the call center. And they're always like, thank you for call choosing Electrify America. Do you have any more questions for us? You can reach us 24 hours a day. Like, yes, Paul, I've spoken to you for two years. We're practically friends. <laughs> Damn. But not quite. Not quite. <laughs> not. 226, baby. Really? Let's go! <laughs> All right, so, and there's, it took we back roads over here, four and a half miles of back roads, but there's a little access highway, I believe, to get us right back to, uh, right back to 70, so. Had some nice speed through there. Thank you for choosing Electrify America. 248 kilowatt, 5%. We plugged in at one. <laughs> Driving it properly. Guys, we have the best charging curve we've ever seen. 255 kilowatts still at 41%. We've seen percent, what am I, from the south? I don't know, we're overtired. But look at this thing. We have not seen this uh, charging curve on this particular Taycan. Now, Taycans built after September 2020 have a little bit of a revised battery pack software or maybe even a pack that allow for really fast charging deep into the pack. Now we've tested one of those and that did 255 kilowatt to about 44%. So that is now following this curve. So perhaps this car has had it all along and uh, whatever the parameters are right now, it's just super happy. But the sun is coming out for the first time on this trip. The car is looking amazing. It looks better dirty, I think. And uh, guys, we may, we may have this record. All right, cable cooling is down but uh, charging is still active. So now we have dynamic cable cooling rate based off of temperature sensors. That's really nice. It used to just be on or off. Still doing 256 kilowatts. This is freaking awesome. Sure. <laughs> Sam, thank you so much for uh, spotting for us in the V-Dub. Yeah, it's, it was a struggle for that old beast. So uh, how was your spotting? How, how fast did you go? What uh, what did you experience? Uh, the first leg, you guys caught up to me real quick. And I was I was doing, you know, mid-90s and slowing down where I thought cops might be. And and then and then I learned. And the next leg, I was uh, I was hovering around 100. Yeah, flat out. Yeah, my car started to smell funny. And <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. Well, look, we, we got here 1% state of charge. We're charging up at almost max speeds 250 kilowatts exactly where we need to be to make up some time everyone always says you can't make up time past denver but i think we're proving that wrong yeah they've never met drew before <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> yeah yeah but you know yesterday time and you did a great job getting us through nebraska that was a whole charging and efficiency battle this the chargers are so close it's an all-out speed run so uh different types of driving styles to get this car across the country as quickly as possible it's not a one size fits all like the gas car runs up into Green River now, 4% buffer on the battery. That is a lot of buffer there, Drew. 
I think we were expecting a little bit more of a climb there at the end, uh, at least according to the charts. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't much. It wasn't much. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I believe we are going to pass the supercharger at some point, but uh, we're going to see if we can activate this charger. You need to be very close to it. So, uh, Electrify America called and left us a message that said, the first three chargers we stop at in Utah, they recommend charging unit number two, as that has had the highest success rate of charging recently. So, we'll go get ourselves plugged in here in a moment. I hate that it's literally three miles off the highway. Two and a half. That's crazy. So, this used to just be a 150 kilowatt, and I believe they just updated it to a 350 for our drive or at least right around the same time. Uh, number two. Number two, so we gotta pull in on the Chatamo side. So back up. And, uh, yep. Might wanna raise the suspension. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna activate the charger, swipe to start. Fresh. Fingers crossed. These are ABB units, right? Yep. The LEDs on the side, yeah. Yeah, nice. Here in Green River, getting a great session. 222 plus kilowatts here. 223 we saw briefly. That's what we like to see. That's how we're going to get this. These ABB chargers, they're freaking awesome. Nice. The Tycon's looking good too. So here's the deal. We have 116 miles of projected range, but we've been losing altitude at most stops. We have a total gain from start to finish of 1,234 feet, which is significant. Uh, and we have two mountain paths, so we go up and down and up and down. So this is going to very much be a blend of uh, probably not 100 plus, but maybe that 90 mile an hour, 85, 90. We need to average 85. So that means we need to drive faster than 85, but still make it to our charger. Uh, that is the goal. And we left because we were tapered down to 98 kilowatts, and we're down to the wire here. So we had to go. So yeah, I mean he was wearing a brown outfit. You tell will f you. So we need to have an average of 85. Over 85. Actually I think it's 84 now. It's nine degrees outside. We're having a pride. Really didn't feel that cold out by the way. It felt nice. Uh, we have an issue where in range mode, typically anything below 94 miles an hour, the car runs front wheel drive and decouples the rear motor, but that is not happening now. The only thing I can think of is because the battery temperature is so warm, the high voltage system coolant is above 133 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like what, 52 degrees Celsius, 53? Anyway, it's north of 50 C, which is a lot. It's very hot for uh, uh, electric vehicle systems. The car doesn't care. The car says I can go up to 55 plus. Um, but that's the only reason I can think that we're not switching to front wheel drive is we'll let the systems cool off. Maybe it's using the motor for a heat sink, uh, as a heat sink, who knows? But uh, that's not good for our efficiency. So we are just uh, gonna have to manage that and keep an eye on it. Right as we're exiting to our charger, this Dodge Ram pickup truck cop pulls out right in front of us, lights on, and then doesn't pull you over. <laughs> but we did kill you, a bird. You were uh, you were asleep for the first part of it. Oh, what happened? Oh, just, uh, yeah. Uh, another guy was cruising pretty quick and... Uh, oh, right I in just, front of you? I just saw the cop before he did, so. <laughs> 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 I hit the brakes and he didn't. I X'd out of our charging uh, speed so he didn't see any of our... Uh... We're almost here to the charger, by the way, if you want to get it going. Oh, yeah. yeah good new signets as well. Yeah, this thing's only given 33 kilowatts. We've seen this a couple times from these. So we're going to activate number three here at uh, Salina, Utah. One, two, three. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this one activated. 
So, stopping that one. There we go. One seven. The same problem. Where it's asking for too much power. So we're running into the same issue on those signet units from yesterday, mostly. Ugh, so cold. There we go. Yeah, 200 with the 240 kilowatts. It all has to do with the handshake. It's saying I can take too much power. Uh, this was, you know, third times the charm. We just plugged this one in. It worked. It only gave it 33 kilowatts. We plugged this one in. It gave it too much, 270 plus, and then it cut off charging. And then I plugged in the original one, and now, now it's good. It, it makes no sense to me. <laughs> Silly. Man, the viewers are going to love this. Oh my god, this is the first time ever on out of spec. <laughs> All right, we are unplugged in reverse. We had an issue when the battery got so hot, we think it doesn't run in front wheel drive, but it cooled itself down. At least that's our theory from the Taycan. Um, we are heading out now, so let's go, go, go. And uh, it's only 77 miles there. And uh, maybe we'll see that guy pulled over. <laughs> yeah. Now he's going to think I was the one driving the Porsche. He might be in um, handcuffs. Yeah, that dude was. Yeah, sounds going. like he was flying. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, west, left. And uh, so we, we, we only charged here above 250 kilowatts, which was amazing. So we, we tapered from 250, 220, 170 instantly. And we were like, look, we have enough range to get to the next station. That's a 350, let's just go. And so that's what we're doing. We are optimizing. We are, uh, let's just see. Yeah, we won't go into front wheel drive again because we're at 135 degrees is my guess. So that's a plausible theory at least. Here's the guy. He's our friend. Yep. We need to say thank you. <laughs> right, absolutely. Yep. 80 mile per hour speed. Yep. In the uh, Hyundai Texan Tucson. Meanwhile, pulls on out, comes after us. <laughs> that would suck. Alright, so what we're going to do is just cruise on over to. Uh, the next one, we're going to win this on the charging speed, I think, and uh, so far things are going well. Okay, it's 110 miles to 102 miles. We have 104 predicted, but we lose 3,000 feet of elevation. So we're going to get out of here. We had a good charging session, 100, 250 kilowatts, but it seems that when we pull big power down low, it tapers earlier. It makes sense. Things get hot. Batteries at 136 degrees Fahrenheit. We got the car in reverse. This car has a neat feature where you can wash the reversing camera, but I also think that the system is glitching. Uh, might be because the door is open. We've had so many software quirks. Yeah, I would say the car is glitching. It doesn't even know what we're driving right now. <laughs> it just has no clues. So we can't wash the cameras, but that is a nice feature. And the Chevy Bolt has that big truck. We're getting out of the way. Excuse me, sorry. Coming through. Coming through, that's right. We're in normal mode, suspension in low. Where are we going? Las Vegas. Wobble we whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Still's got snow on the front. Nice, Drew. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping it cool. Holy sh! Those brakes are. Or those wheels are. Still, still connecting. This is not good. Oh. Vehicle, Vehicle timeout. Time out. Uh, uh, read, read, read. They said to use number two. No. Washington, one, two, swipe. Get it in, nice. Initiating charging, please talk to each other. 
Yeah, I think sometimes with a lot of stress on that handle, it doesn't always talk so well. Oh yeah, it didn't do this last time, did it? No. Good. Initiating charging. Oh, ho! the fast oh, one. Awesome. The fast one. Hell yeah. <laughs> zoom, zoom, come on, let's go. Make a charge. 240, 240. good. Yep, 242 kilowatts right now. That's what we need. Let's see how many uh, miles it is to the next one, but I don't think it's far. I think we just taper as soon as we're off of 250 kilowatts, we just head out and go to the next one. These charging sessions here towards the end of the trip have been flawless. Uh, touch to return, okay. Well, the software is buggy, there we go. So we've been here 12 minutes, we've added 43 kilowatt hours. We're charging at 166 kilowatts. I'd like to get out of here. It's 131 miles to our destination. How many miles indicated on the car? 129. 129. I think we'll just wait for it to say the same. I'm sure we'll be a little efficient, a little more efficient than the guessometer predicts. Take a look at all of the snacks and food and crap and jackets and pillows and blankets we packed. So in case we didn't use the heater, um, we'd be bundled up. And we did that a couple times actually. So. I think uh, we're pretty much ready to jump in the car and head off to the next leg. Let's get it. I don't know if anyone's coming, but they better stop. Yeah, we can't see. Yeah, <laughs> back up cameras. That's so dirty. Woo! Yeah. I must say, Timon, you upgraded big time from Greensboro. That place. <laughs> that was a miserable, miserable place. What is the speed limit? 75? Why yeah. am I going so slow? I, I didn't even realize. I was just driving. I think. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada. Love this place, of course. We're at the premium outlets, charging up the Taycan at 248 kilowatts right now. The Electrify America software is not looking so happy. It says it's stuck on processing payment, but it is actually charging. So not sure what's going on with that. Doesn't matter. I'm happy we're getting the juice. I've been parking like an idiot here at these stations, just in case one of the 350s doesn't work, I can reach it with another one. So we are sort of blocking two stalls, but we also need both of them. So uh, I doubt another Taycan is just gonna show up because that's really the only car on the sale that needs the 350 over the 150. And if they do, we of course would probably let them charge, wouldn't you say? Maybe? Sure, yeah, yeah. at this point, yes. Yeah, sure, because I think we're, we're pretty good on time right now and we're getting another really good charge session right here. So if we can continue with these really good charging sessions, then uh, we, we may only have one or two more stops and then maybe break the record with this now white Porsche Taycan 4S. So we have a couple options to get us through to Los Angeles. We're looking really good on time. We're projecting somewhere about a half hour ahead of schedule, maybe even an hour if we're really lucky. Although the stretch into Vegas was pretty poor, tons of police activity. We had to keep the speeds low. We didn't want to risk it uh, on every stretch just to go because I think we're looking pretty good on time. Now we're getting a great charging session as uh, we really needed. However, there's uh, two more chargers we have planned left in our trip. There's Baker, then Barstow, and then we finish at uh, Portofino Hotel and Marina in Redondo Beach. The Baker Charger, which is the one halfway between here and Barstow, is limited to 150 kilowatt only. Now there is a 350 kilowatt EV Go station at the world's tallest thermometer. Although we have we are comfortable with EA at this point, we know we can pretty much guarantee the charging. I know my app works. I kind of don't want to diverge just to get another couple minutes, especially with something like this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to stay here in Vegas until this car tapers off of 150 kilowatts. If at that point we can stretch it and make it to Barstow, great, we'll skip Baker. If not, then we will top up in Baker at 150 kilowatts for like a couple minutes 
maybe just to get to Barstow dead because then we can pull again 250, 270 kilowatts. So that's our charging plan for the end. I actually think it might be faster if we just stay here a little bit longer, skip the, the uh, process to plug in, swipe for payment, find the charger off the highway, and uh, that, that might be the best move. So we'll play around with it. Um, and, and we'll uh, we'll see what happens. We're not really sure yet. It all depends on how good this charging session is. Because again, as soon as it tapers off 150, we're gonna be going unless it's like another couple minutes for us to make it to Barstow. So we just uh, came into California. We got our Kia guy. This was our lead. He's doing shoulder passes up here. <laughs> we're not that crazy. We still, I think we're good for the record. But we have our other friend here in the MDX. It's been the three of us shredding into uh, California through the desert here. And, um, yeah, man, we have, we're lucky to have these guys in front of us just pushing traffic. Our Kia guy, I think he might be gone now. He freaking shredded everyone on the shoulder. That was awesome. And uh, full, full cannonball pass right there. Uh, we're not that crazy. So we are just uh, gonna be 29 miles to the um, Baker charger. We actually realized that the last charger, we tapered down to 100 kilowatts earlier than expected because we actually overheated the battery. So this little red dash line is not accurate. It started to cut our charging speeds at 135 Fahrenheit, Drew, was it? Yep. Yeah, and um, so when we left the charger, I pulled out on the road and I floored it. I'm like, uh, why is it so slow? <laughs> and we realized, oh, it's actually, that that's hot. And it makes sense because Teslas really don't let you get above 50, 55 in Ludicrous Plus in the case of Model S. This is about the same, maybe even slightly warmer. So uh, no on the right, slowing down. Um, yeah, now we're just trying to push our way into California as hard as possible. Kind of coming in at a bad time. It's 3.24 p.m. Everyone's kind of going. Looks like we have another shoulder pass move, judging by the smoke <laughs> up here. <laughs> Guy's crazy. It's just some guy driving a Kia. And uh, now we are we're trying to get in. So uh, off to Baker, quick top up, trying to let the battery cool on the way, and then it'll be to Barstow through one way or the other okay point four of a mile yeah, it's up here okay. station two it's, yeah it's right here you arrived at your destination and number two yep station two and boom okay Station two, click the battery, click the DC pins. Let's get it charging. <laughs> it's a nice EA site, but they don't have 350 kilowatt charging. I know they're working on it, they want to. I think they said there wasn't enough power here, but they obviously had enough power for all the superchargers. <laughs> Someone else, isn't it? Oh no, it's gotta be the same dude. Yeah, it's the His same bumper's dude. like not doing so great. It's our buddy in the Kia causing havoc. It's Freaking like we, crazy. That's what we like to see. We were getting 170 kilowatts on that charger there. We're gonna be plugging it into this one here and uh because we we should be getting 260 kilowatts or so a battery's at the perfect temperature for fast charging so this is the most important charge of the trip we need 131 miles into la but we lose elevation so we're going to charge so the car says we have about 120 miles we can show up to the portofino dead i don't know how we'll charge it when we're there but that's a problem for another day so let's uh get this thing juicing up and see if this can output more than the 170 kilowatts. I hope so, otherwise we just left some time on the table, but I'm pretty sure we should be doing more. So fingers crossed, station number six right here does some serious work for us. Come on, let's do this. Not good, this is actually slower than what we had just experienced with the other charger. Oh crap, did I just f us here? Oh, excuse my language. Oh crap, did I just ruin us here? Well, we'll have to see. Let's just uh, give this one minute till that says one minute. And if it doesn't move, we're gonna be going back to number five. We are now back on station five. This is why we park in between. <laughs> What's it doing, Timon? Nothing yet. Nothing yet? 134. Oh, better, okay, good. 
170 nice so yeah differences in stations for sure glad we uh are on this one hey good good so uh just uh, contemplating which is the best route to go so we have we can go i-15 to 210 west which is two hours and nine minutes or we can go i-15 to i-10 west which is two hours and ten minutes so we'll do the 210 Perfect. No need to convince us. We've selected okay. we've selected 210. We're leaving here in 3 minutes or less. Uh and yeah, I'll uh, I'll let you know when we uh, when we do roll out. Okay. okay. Awesome. Thanks. All right, bye. You got my full attention on the Just road. Look for people behind us. So we need to be there at uh 745, right? 746 with the latest. Yep. We have a 711 predicted arrival. So that gives us a 30 minute buffer because I know I'm gonna miss some turns holy crap can you imagine that 30 minutes it's coming across to across the entire country think about how complicated this run was all these issues and stuff just for 30 minutes yeah <laughs> every minute counted it still does move that bush move that bush <laughs> get going you're good Oh, battery's hot again. That's Florida. It's limiting power because it's toasty. Gorgeous. Couldn't ask for anything more beautiful than that, seriously. Dang. Sorry, we, we thought that's an SS. Oh, what's that F-150? It's got stuff on. 11 minutes to go, 3 miles. Yeah, go get the ticket. Sounds good. See, that's the move. That's what you got to do. Just rile them up. Yep. <laughs> Just let them go. <laughs> it's like a wind-up toy. <laughs> Too predictable. <laughs> Equinox. Those BRZs are slow. And it's an automatic too. <laughs> Actually, the Equinox is doing better than I thought he would. <laughs> but I didn't quite process that that was what was in the front of the right lane. It doesn't let you launch with a dead battery. Already had dead battery. Here we go, everyone out of the way. In a quarter of a mile, you'll arrive at the Portofino Hotel in Marina. The Portofino. Oh, he's stop. shredding. Does this dude know what's going on? We stop it as soon as we pull into the parking lot. As soon as we bump into the all four wheels on the hump, and we and we click the time. Come on, dude, go. Do not break. Let's go. And go, 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 stop. Let's go. Nice. So what's the official time then? 44, 25, 59? Hell yeah! There we go. Sweet! Oh. You got it! By like a lot. <laughs> what was it? Uh, 44, 25 over 45, 16. Wait, what was the time? 44, 25. Holy Yeah. Shit. This okay. car just had the kicked out of it for the last two days. That's awesome. Yeah, we charged way too much at the last one, too. Dude, we shredded into town as hard as we could. I know. Because <laughs> I was sitting there, as I was tracking you, I was sitting there, I was like, oh, they're bursting, they got a while away. I was like, yeah, give me a while. And then I looked at the whole What else was I supposed to do? Oh. <laughs> I don't think you can. Huh? What else was I supposed to do? <laughs> I get a video of the guys here. Just, just smile. Drew, how do you feel? Really good, really good. Time in? <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, um, terrible, I Model X, do you think they just set a record? Electric record? No chance. Definitely not in the next. Um, damn. Tycon did pretty well. That's the officially the fastest road tripping EV there is. We just proved it. Um, oh, yeah, well. Awesome job, bro. 
Thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right, well, we are gonna, uh, Alyssa has been calling about six times, so I should probably talk to her. Okay, see you then. Drew, we just finished up our drive yesterday and we are sitting in the Portofino Hotel Marina in the room where all of the original cannonballers would celebrate back in the days of Brock Yates and the races across the country in the 70s. Uh, what do you think? What's, what's it like? You're officially a cannonballer now. Yeah, now that I've uh, gotten a night's sleep, uh, I can, my brain can work maybe. Yeah, it was, it was fun. I mean, very interesting, you know, to do it in an electric car. It's the only cannonball I've done, but still to uh, to just be managing the the charging and speeds and you know then we've got temperatures to to consider as well um yeah that was all that was all very interesting to me i'm I, you know i like the engineering stuff so that was uh that was cool to play with and obviously driving fast so um yeah it was it was great and uh to have shown that it's possible to to beat the the current uh, you know, best technology uh, is pretty is pretty awesome. So uh, yeah, super fun and really uh, really enjoyed doing it. <laughs> cool, yeah, me too as well. And just hanging out at the Portofino and the room where you can get a cannonball cannonball cocktail. They know what's up here. And uh, all of the runs have been ending here. At least the traditional Red Ball to Portofino run since the 70s. Yep. And uh, right along the water where there's a whole bunch of seals hanging out outside. And it's just cool to be another another name on a list in the part of history of Cannonball. All right, Timon, we finished up the run. We're in the, the famous ending place here at the Portofino Hotel. What do you think? You're officially a Cannonballer. It honestly feels amazing that I can say that now. That's cool. Because um, I was jealous of your first run that I didn't get an invite. Right. <laughs> um, but I, I don't think we could have asked for any anything better now. Uh, we left, uh, we made some good time, could have been a little bit better, but... The driving, we left very little time on the table. Yeah, charging-wise, we could have saved Had some time. hours. Um, but other than that, went flawlessly, for the most part, besides the snow in the beginning. But I'm happy we're now in this 63-degree weather. Yeah, we <laughs> made it safely. We didn't really piss too many people off, right? right. <laughs> Just kind of cruised around, <laughs> which was great, and, uh... How about that Kia on the way in, though? That guy was a freaking madman. Yeah, that psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are the next day getting some photos of the Porsche at the Portofino. Uh, we haven't told anyone yet, so I wonder, we don't know what people are going to think. What do you think people are going to think? I honestly cannot tell you. <laughs> yeah, we have no clue. I think uh, all the Tesla people are going to lose their mind and be like, well, my Model S could do it faster. Okay, Jim, let's see you do it. <laughs>